My name is Alex Salazar. I'm a former Los Angeles police officer. Uh, I now work as a private investigator, and uh, you know, it, this is something that didn't obviously happen overnight. It's kind of like a long story here, but but here I am in uh, you know the state of Texas, in in the city of Arlington. Uh, here hooked up tonight with, with a, a fine cadre, a, a group that's caught national attention uh, for them exercising their, their constitutional rights to, to carry uh, their weapons and, and also to film and videotape the police. Uh, in a day where right now so many things are going on with, with police brutality uh, being a, a topic on, on everybody's mind, uh, you know, I'm proud to be with these individuals here who are, are pushing you know, this uh, issue to the edge, you know, to talk about things that, you know, haven't been dealt with in, in, in modern day society. So happy to be here with these guys. Now you had a unique perspective being on the inside of what's considered one of the most corrupt police departments in the country. Now, were you outspoken? Did you see any corruption while you were on the inside? Most definitely I, I did see it and I was also a part of it and, and also a participant of, of being part of the system at one time in my life. Uh, it, it's a, a, a moment where you know I'm not proud uh, of to talk about it, but I talk about it because I believe that uh, there is a uh, atonement uh, that needs to be done uh, by people to recognize and, and to deal with societal issues that you know isn't just you know, on one person, okay, but rather a, a issue that uh, is systemic and that's been going around for a long time. And and so for me, uh, I did witness acts of uh, police brutality. I also participated in it. Um, and and so, uh, you know, I stand here, you know, naked in, in my own truth of, of what I know, what I saw, and, and hopefully not to be demonized. But, but, you know, to discuss an issue that right now is, is a topic of great conversation within our country. So, um, obviously, you're not from Dallas, but you've been traveling the country. Um, what, what, what are you doing now? What, what is your activism? My activism right now is to get police officers from all over the country to talk about the brutality that's going on. It's about talking about institutional racism. Uh, that does exist, uh, that doesn't just affect white officers, but also black, Latino, Asian, whatever. You know, when you're taught to be a certain way and you're trained to be a certain way, you become these, these individuals that, you know, you don't ever think that you're going to become this person. Right. Uh, you know, here uh, standing, I was just talking with someone about the uh, American sniper individual, a, a person uh, who, like myself, was also in the military that went in to serve our country for honorable intentions yet came out this this so-called monster uh, killing machine uh, that uh, you know became desensitized. Uh, today many of our police officers are in that problem because they're former military and, and uh, you know I've seen this unfortunately from a unique perspective of, of being a private investigator uh, that investigates cases involving uh, police killings and shootings of unarmed individuals. And, and I also speak, of course, with my previous experience as a Los Angeles police officer. So where do we go from here? Um, how, how, do we, how do we curb the corruption and the abuse that we're seeing um, today? Well, what we need to do is we need to acknowledge it, uh, that it does occur. Uh, there seems to be a, a fear of denial. Uh, there's a lot of um, ignorance that, that's going on. Um, People are afraid. It's, it's very similar to a father who molests their children. Everybody stays quiet until you know something brings out what's really going on. And then people are stigmatized, people are shamed. And, and so what we're seeing is a lot of uh, law enforcement's um, dark, dirty, little secrets coming out. And, and they're right here, like with this technology where I'm being filmed right now, you know, we have the power of the internet. We have people now united uh, for us to, to you know, get together and, and not be afraid. Because before, when people would get together, they would be targeted. And in many cases, they would be followed and then they would be executed, all right? And, and so this is a, a very uh, unique time period that we're living in that, uh, you know, we had this liberty, uh, you know, watching, uh, you know, uh, Kenny and, and, and Corey and, and these gentlemen here, you know, carrying their weapons and, and not in an act of defiance, but in an act of being, you know, what it is to be an American, okay, and, and not to be treated 
uh, like uh, you know, like 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 a rogue human being. But I guarantee you, you see a black person out here. What's going to happen? You know, this is the crazy thing that we're dealing with here. Is is this issue of race? And and so we need to talk about the race. I believe in a way that is sane, a way that we don't um, you know start attacking people because that's usually what happens. But you know what I'm seeing here again. You know, from my humble little platform as an investigator, there's been no accountability for the police. We're just barely seeing now, like what we saw here happen quickly in South Carolina, the arrest of this officer who, you know, had uh, planted this taser on on this individual, uh, and and you know, who thought he had gotten away with this. How many other cases get away like that every single day? How many of us know people? who are in jail or prison right now for crimes that they didn't do. I mean, we, we know that. I have cases right now where, you know, I'm just unbelievable that these people are behind bars once you start seeing the true facts and the realities. And the problem, I think, is, is that most people don't care, too. You know, that's the sad part is, is that there's this apathy, there's this way of thinking that, you know, it's not happening to me, so why should I be worried about it. Exactly. And and of course many of these people become activists uh, because they've been messed with, they've been screwed with, they've been fucked with. And 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 so, you know, that's why I'm here. I'm, I'm here hoping to, to bring dialogue. I, I, I don't want to go against the United States government. I don't want to go against the police or anything like that. But what we need to have is a solid discussion, you know, of, of honesty, transparency, and, and, and uh, most of all just uh, you know, talking about it. So, if someone wanted to get in touch with you and, oh, and more read more back. about more you, back. how would they go about okay. finding you? Well, I'm, I'm part of a, a nationwide group now um, that calls for, um, you know, whistleblower protection for police officers. Uh, currently, the way the system stands is a good police officer cannot come out and talk about the corruption that they see. Mm. Uh, there are numerous documented cases that go all the way back to Frank Serpico of the NYPD uh, where you know he tried to talk about the corruption that was going on and of course his partners tried to kill him they didn't respond to the backup and, and they put him in a situation uh, that you know no one was there at the time and and so um, you know I operate a website that's called renegadepopo.com and uh, that's there to you know for police officers also that are suffering from PTSD and it also talks about the culture of the code of silence Code of silence is, is something that's really, really big that needs to be discussed with in law enforcement. Uh, that is what keeps everything under wraps. This is the environment where shootings are swept under the rug. Uh, this is where, you know, all the massive cover-ups come. This is why people right now do not trust the police. And, and we need to get back, uh, you know, to those basics of, of being a human being, respecting human lives, and, and, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, by us getting together like this, even on a rainy night, you know, uh, here in, in uh, Arlington, Texas, that, that we can, you know, find that, you know, connection to, to keep on going and, and doing what we're doing. Absolutely.